Okay, in today's lesson we're going to be looking at using physics problems uh, to solve for different uh, variables. So uh, a few of those variables we're going to be looking at is how to solve for speed, how to solve for distance, and how to solve for time. And then we're also going to look at Newton's second law, which is the force equals mass times acceleration, and how we can utilize that equation to solve for force, mass, as well as acceleration. So we're going to be rearranging some of the equations. Uh, the problems we're looking at are pretty simple problems. But if you want some more challenging problems, there's many of them out there on the internet. Just feel free to do a Google search and look for some additional physics problems uh, to kind of work up to some of the more challenging ones. If you're having trouble with any of this, feel free to post me a comment. I'll get back to you. Or you can uh, shoot me an email. Or if you're in my class, feel free to come by and visit with me in tutoring or during class, and I'll be happy to help you out. Anyway, this is just kind of a quick lesson. Uh, please take the time to review it. If you need to go back and see something, just rewind the video. Uh, watch it again until you feel pretty confident about it. Okay, good luck. I know we've already looked at speed in my class, but I want to look at how we know that the units are what they are, and then how can we rearrange this equation to solve for distance or time? Well, first of all, we know that speed equals distance divided by time. Okay, we know that distance is measured in meters in science, which is little m, and we know that normally in time we're going to measure in seconds, we could measure in minutes, or we could measure in hours or days or weeks. That's not going to change from one country to another. Time will always be measured in those types of units. In this particular equation, we're going to be looking at seconds, okay, which is little s. If you notice this little divided sign, basically means to divide, okay? So it's going to be basically meters per second. Well, my answer will be meters per second, because that's basically what's happening with the math on the other side of the equal sign. So in nearly every case I can think of, your units of your answer will always be derived by the math that happens to get that answer. I was actually taught that in college, which had a, had a teacher taught me that in middle school or high school, it would have helped me out tremendously, because in physics problems or story problems, you're not always told, find the distance or find the time. You've got to look at sometimes the units to figure out what they're looking for to help you out. And so this should hopefully help you out if you understand this particular situation. Okay? So let's start with our first problem. It says, you arrive in my class 45 seconds after leaving math, which is 90 meters away. How fast did you travel? Well, it says, how fast did I travel? If you notice, it didn't say what was my speed. Okay? So fast is a way to describe speed. So sometimes you have to basically look at the coded messages in the story problem and figure that out. So it basically says you arrive in 45 seconds. Well, that's a measurement of time, right? And it's 90 meters away. Well, that is a measurement of distance. And so we know we have our D and our T. So that's another way to figure out what it is you're solving for. Whatever you can not figure out the variable, that's what you're solving for. So speed, which was meters per second, we're looking for meters per second. Well, that doesn't show up in the story problem. So that is what we are looking for. And so speed equals 45 seconds. So 45 seconds will be at the bottom. And 90 meters will be at top because that is my distance. So when we divide 45 into 90, it's going to equal, it's going to equal 2 meters per per second. Okay, so that's our answer for this problem. Okay, now one thing I want to show you is when we are trying to rearrange an equation, like we already know how to solve for speed because it's speed equals distance over time, but if we want to solve for distance or time, we have to get those variables by themselves on the other side of the equal sign. So we are going to work on getting that figured out together as we work through this next step. Okay. Now this is solving algebraically, so doing it in a way that we would do it in algebra. Now there's another way which I'll show you after this, which I think is a little bit easier for most of my students in science if we have to solve for one of these other variables. So the first thing we're going to do is put S over 1, and then we're going to put everything in parentheses. Okay, now if you notice, we want to get rid of the T out of here. We want to solve for D right now. So I want to get rid of this T. And so the way to do this is if you notice, t is on the bottom of the fraction. So I want to do the opposite of divide. I want to multiply. Okay? So t over 1, if I do that on both sides, 
then I can isolate the, the distance, okay? So by doing this, then my t's will cancel out, leaving me t times s equals d. So it would be t times s equals d, okay? Because the d remains here. And this t multiplies by this s because all these ones go away. And so uh, if I want to just reverse my equation so that it's more uh, like I would normally like to see it with the d on the left side, I could just say d equals t uh, times s. Now, we could do the very same thing uh, for the D. We could just basically uh, divide out or multiply out the D and get it to the other side and so on to kind of get it all by, get the T by itself, okay? So we could essentially do the very same thing. But what I want to do now is kind of show you another way of solving this. Basically, what happens in the triangle method is we have three variables. And if you look in the triangle, I have three available places to put variables. And so, if you notice this D and T are a fraction, they're upstairs, downstairs neighbors. So I'm going to kind of treat my triangle like a little three-room house. Well, the upstairs neighbor is the D. So it really doesn't matter where you put the T, he's always going to be a downstairs neighbor. But for this particular situation, I'm just going to put the T in this spot right here. Now, if you notice, S is left by himself. Well, S just happens to plug in wherever there's an available spot when you're done plugging in the other two. So we're going to put S right here. So how do I find my other two equations that are wrapped up in this problem? Well, let's say that, let's go back to time. We just solved for it a minute ago. So I want to solve for time. Well, t, let's put him by himself. t equals. Well, look at what's left over. We have d and s. Well, they're upstairs, downstairs neighbors now. So t equals d over s. That's one equation, okay? Well, let's look at another equation we can get out of here. We already know how to solve for s. s equals d over t. And now we know that t equals d over s. So let's go ahead and put my variables back in their places. And let's now solve for d. So d equals what? Well, if you notice, s and t are now next door neighbors downstairs. If they're next door neighbors downstairs, then they multiply. So d equals s times t. And that's my equation for that. So if I want to find a problem that solves for time, I'll use this equation. If I have a problem that asks me to find the distance of something, I'm going to use this equation. If I need to find a problem that solves for speed, then I'm going to use my normal equation. Okay? So we can get three equations out of this just simply by using the triangle method. This works for practically every middle school problem we're going to use in physics. Okay, so let's look at this problem. It says, how far can you get away from your little brother with a squirt gun filled with paint if you can travel at 3 meters per second and you have 15 seconds before he sees you. Well, we're saying how far can he travel. I think I know what that is, but let's eliminate it and, and know for sure. Well, it says that you have 15 seconds. Well, that is time, right? So we already know our time. That's already solved for. Okay? And it says you were traveling at 3 meters per second. Well, if you remember earlier, we said speed is measured in meters per second. So we know our S. Okay? What do we don't know? Well, we don't know our distance, d. So we need to find distance this time. So if I take and I look over here, d equals s times t. We just got that, right? d equals s times t. So that's the problem we're going to use in this particular situation, or this is the equation we're going to use. So d equals s times t. So my s was 3 meters per second times 15 seconds, okay? So I just multiply those two together, so it's going to be 3 times 15. I'm going to end up with 45 meters. That's my answer for that problem. Okay, now we also have another problem that says, in a competition, an athlete threw a flying disc 139 meters through the air. While in flight, the disc traveled at an average speed of 13 meters per second. How long did the disc remain in the air? So the problem is, how long did the disc remain in the air? Let's try to figure out what they're asking here. Well, we know the disc traveled 139 meters. Well, that's our distance. We also know that it was traveling at a speed of, even says speed, of 13 meters per second. That's our S. The variable we don't know is the T. So we don't know time. Well, our equation for that, if we look back, time 
equals b over s, this one right here. So let's go back and use that equation. So t equals d over s. And so in this problem, t equals our distance was 139 meters divided by 13 meters per second. So we simply take the 139 and we divide it by 13 because 13 is going to go onto the top and that's going to be 10.69 seconds. How do I know it's in seconds? Well there's meters here and there's meters here and they cancel out so my answer is in seconds. Okay, We're not always going to get an even number and that's okay because you know if it's even all the time and that's pretty simple sometimes we need to end up with something that might be a little bit more complex than that. Now we're going to look at Newton's second law. Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration. If you notice, it also has three variables, F, M, and A. Now force is in Newtons. We talked about that in class. And Newtons is simply kilograms times meters per second squared. So another way of saying Newtons is kilogram meters per second squared. Okay. Now that's a long thing to say. That's why we've kind of changed the wording to Newton also to give credit to Newton for all of his uh, laws and all of his contributions to science and math. And so Newton's is simply kilogram meters per second squared. Okay. Now meters per second squared is, a, is, is different than just meters per second. It's an acceleration which basically means for every second it's speeding up by that amount. So whatever our answer is, if it was 5 meters per second squared, every second that goes by the object is speeding up by an additional 5 meters per second. Okay. So in this particular problem, it says your bicycle has a mass of 9.1 kilograms. You accelerate it at a rate of 1.79 meters per second squared. Calculate the net force that is accelerating the bicycle. So F, pretty simple problem, equals M, well M is 9.1 kilograms times the rate of speed or the acceleration is 1.79 1.79 meters per second squared. All we have to do is uh, calculate that out. So 9.1 times 1.79, and that will equal 16.289. 16.289, and that's four, so it's in newtons. Okay. Now I know this, if for those of you that are watching that have more advanced math, we're not talking about significant figures right now. That'll be for a later, uh, later lesson. Okay, so if you notice, this is set up the same way as in our previous problems. So we already know the equation for force. Force equals mass times acceleration. So we already know this guy, right? And if you notice F equals MA, well M and A are next door neighbors downstairs. That's how we get the M times A. Well, let's say that I wanted to find out the equation for mass. And so I want to find out what is the equation for mass. So M equals, you notice F and A are now upstairs, downstairs. So M equals F over A. Okay, so what about the other situation? What if we want to find the acceleration of an object? How would we go about doing that? Well, A is right here. And A equals what's left over. So if you notice, F and M are now upstairs, downstairs. So A equals F over M. So those are my equations that come out of this particular one. Just like our speed problem gave us two additional equations as well. Okay, so our first equation is a rocket provides 28,913 28, newtons of thrust. The rocket has a mass of 2,350 kilograms. Calculate its acceleration. Ignore gravity as a variable in this problem. So we're not interested in the opposing forces right now, okay? As you get into high school, those will be important to you. But for middle school, we're not going to worry about those other opposing, or opposing forces that work against us. So what are our knowns? Well, the first thing we know, we know our force, right? Our force is always in newtons, and so we know that unit is describing that number there. So our force is 28,000. 913 newtons, okay? We also know 
that its mass, even says mass in the problem, our mass equals 2,350 kilograms. So what's our unknown? Well, it wants us to calculate the acceleration, so we do not know A. A is our unknown variable, so that's what we want to solve for. Well, so what's our equation? If we go back and look, our equation for acceleration is A equals F over M. So that's what we're going to use. A equals F over M. So now it says work out the problem. So I'm going to take A, and I'm going to plug in my numbers. F is 28,913 newtons over 2,350 kilograms. Okay? So we're going to pop that in and say, okay, well, 28,000 913 divided by 2,350 equals 12.30. And there's some more trailing numbers, but it keeps going on, so I'm just going to stop there. And what is my acceleration? It's in meters per second squared. So that's how fast it's traveling. Basically, every second that goes by is speeding up by 12.30 meters per second. Okay, that's what the second squared means. Okay. An object has an acceleration of 15 meters per second squared and impacts a stationary object with a force of 1,200 newtons. What was the mass of the object in kilograms? Okay, so what's our known? Well, we know A, you know this acceleration of 15 meters per second squared. So we know that one. And it also says we know the force. So the force right here is 1,200 newtons. Our unknown is what is the mass. So we want to know the mass. We don't know yet. So what is our equation for this? Well, let's go back and look. Our equation for, acceler or for mass is m equals f over a. So we're going to use that one. m equals f over a. So now we want to solve the problem, m, and plug in our, our uh, stuff. So we got 1,200 newtons divided by 50 meters per second squared. Okay? So let me plug that in. So 1,200 divided by 50 equals 24. And what is our units for mass? Okay, mass was in kilograms. So the object has a mass of 24 kilograms. Okay, I know that's been a lot of math for this particular lesson, but pretty, uh, pretty important that you guys know how to solve for these types of equations. So if you're having trouble, please come back and see me, and uh, we'll be able to work that out.